hello and welcome to beautiful Phil. This is not Philadelphia at all, but this wedding today is in Philadelphia and I want to thank you for being here. My name is Scott. If this is your first time ever seeing any of my behind the scenes content, I'm excited to bring this to you. We are in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is obviously a parking garage, super not exciting, but it's going to get exciting. Absolutely gorgeous day. We're excited to take you along for this journey. We got a good friend Chuck behind the camera filming. Pablo is ready to do his thing. We're about to head into bride prep. Let's enjoy the day and welcome. I'll bring the gimbal. You bring the monopods. I'll bring the case. We don't need audio. He's in the same hotel, which is good, but then you can obviously have that. So first things first, we always like to get situated and we, we like to use walkie talkies for communication. A lot of people ask about how we use these for communication. The answer is we're talking them, but they work really, really well, especially when you're in an environment like a wedding where we're constantly having communication about a bunch of different things. This allows us to have communication between each other really easily and not have to hope that someone looks at their cell phone for a text message or, or looks at a phone call if it's ringing. So we all have one of these and then we have these little earpieces, a microphone that are connected with us, works really, really well. And then you just always have quick communication because weddings a lot of times is just about last minute or quick communication. This just helps us, especially when we're in the same hotel, for me to just touch base with Pablo or assistance or whatever it is about where we're at and what we're doing. We've had lots of rainy weddings. This is like, it's amazing. Hello. Hi, Hi everybody. Hi. Yes. There's lots of you in here. How is everybody? What? Do you recognize Megan? Oh yeah. Hi. She's your referral. So, so you just said, she just, we just shot her wedding. I didn't realize, Leslie. how are you? Yeah, nice to, I said I didn't realize. I know. Half the time I don't know how people came across this. How are you guys? Good, how are you guys? You did? Okay, good. Good to see you. I mean, I guess you have to look at a lot of video of me. <laughs> hours half, and hours. Half, half the time, like until we get, yeah, like we get here and we sometimes forget like how people actually necessarily even came across right. us until we get, we're like, oh yeah, that's, that, that's, right, that's cool. Right. Um, well, we're gonna get dressed and all that right away. Where is all your stuff? Like dress, okay, so shoes. Okay, so we put my stuff up. We kept the room upstairs. The okay. suite clean, so okay. my dress is up there. Oh, perfect. Shoes are up there. Rings are up there. Where is that? So the first thing we like to always do is get any dress shots and all the detail shots, rings, shoes, all that thing. We like to just get that out of the way right away. That way we don't have to worry about it last second before she's like about to get ready. We want to make sure that we get anything we need done, and then. No one's waiting around for us. All right, there's the dress. Get the S out and 12 to 35. All right, where are the other rings? So we like to carry everything basically in one case, everything except the audio, but all cameras. So we have three cameras, nine lenses, six lenses, seven, I don't know, who cares? Six batteries microphones, Mavic Air, just in case we don't get time to use the Inspire, we always keep the drone in there. Everything's really clean, it's in certain positions. I'm really particular about like getting caps back in certain spots because we wanna make sure that when we're packing things back up, it's clean, it's easy to get to. Um, so that's how we always keep it very organized. We're gonna get the gimbal set up and get some dress shots. 12 to 35 for this? Yeah, 12 to 35. For those who have never seen any of my content before. We are GH5 users, so we really like the GH5 and that whole system. So we have two GH5s and one GH5S. The GH5S primarily only serves the role of gimbal and low light, but we don't deal with much low light situations because we light things, but we like to use the GH5S on the gimbal because it's really why it was purchased. Um, it doesn't have stabilization built in the camera like the GH5s, and so it serves a perfect role for that. It also allows us to keep the f-stop higher if we're shooting some gimbal stuff, and we need stuff to remain in focus. In focus, that didn't make any sense. We need to remain in focus. But we typically use the 12 to the 35, which is a 24 to 70 equivalent on the gimbal. It just gives us some flexibility of focal length. And the cool thing about these gimbals is even though you balance them accordingly to the specific lens, 
once it's up and running, I pop in all the time to like 50 or, or 25 or 30. I can move it around and it never actually throws off the balance once it's actually powered on. So it's kind of cool. Is this centered right now? Yeah. Is it? With the window? Yeah. Okay. Like that? All right, drop that. You're definitely going to need to spot it. Um, actually, yeah, I can see your reflection. Um, maybe go, go on that side, on the other side of the bed. Go toward the window closer, like a, a more of an angle like that. Yeah, that way. Not crazy about this at all, but it's uh, there's not that much we could do at this room. I mean, this location without bringing it all the way downstairs, which I don't want to do. It's not terrible. It's a variable ND filter for the 50. Because I shoot a lot at 1.2 with this lens, obviously it can be very bright. So, it's a recent change. I haven't always done that. But now I kind of do. That light overhead is like the ultimate, not what you want for color. But because this part right here is not crazy important, we're fine. Question for you. How important is this light to you? Not right important. Today. I'll ask him too. Just I love to turn it off. And I, light, so that's what I was thinking, and I like that light so much better. Question for you. Yeah. Is this light super important to you? Or is no. it, are, you mind if I turn it off? Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. Anytime I can turn off lights in the room, I will always do it. Especially if I have daylight like this. No point mixing. But yeah, if there's a lot of daylight available like there is, I'll always try to turn off the lights, but I will always make sure I ask people first if it's important to them the light, because I don't want to screw up what they're doing. If it is really important to them, I will let them do their thing. Gino, it's at five for us, right? Yeah, but... So the bride right now is in like perfect light by the window. But in the event that she was not, I would let them do their makeup stuff kind of wherever they want, but then I would ask them to reposition into something like this just for the final shots. But luckily she's in good position. Where I like that shot. Come on, do it again, do it again. Come on, go back. Ah, got blocked. Here we go. All right, go back, go back. Go back. There we go. Nope. All right, here we go. Nope, blocked. Oh, that's nice.
That's it right there. Stabilization GH5, man. Part of what I love about the GH5 is the fact that they're just so incredibly good with stabilization that it's allowed us to actually do a lot more handheld stuff at weddings, which I really like just because I can get in spots quicker. I can do some more natural, subtle movement here and there, and it's just so steady. This is not even a native Panasonic lens. The natives are even better but it's ridiculous how good it is. And their dad's like... How are you? I'm Scott. I'm Maddie. Nice to meet you, Maddie. Tyler. How are you doing, Tyler? Nice to Good you. to meet you. Do you have the right. key to the other room? Uh, I don't. I put it back here. Cool. It's uh, someone. Yeah, as I say, Morgan's mom. Oh, I think up went upstairs there? to, to uh, but you won't be able to get up without the the elevators. Like, well, we have a key, right? Oh yeah, yeah, perfect. So she's in she there? might she might be what? Oh, she's in there. Okay. I took. I already shot all the dress stuff but I left it all hanging, like just on the door for now, and you guys can do whatever you want with it. I left the dress out of all the packaging and everything just on the back wall right now, so the and then are the there. details are um, on the, it's like basically the same room setup kind of this, but the details are all sitting on a thing. The other rings are already there, but if you want her engagement ring, she still has it on. Oh, there you go, perfect. <laughs> Just do a nice portrait. Better and better. Right there, beautiful. They come together. Gorgeous, right there. Hold that. Eyes here. Maddie, do you mind killing this lamp? So it's uh, 150. Um, I'm not sure how long I'll specifically be here when she's setting up and doing her thing. Um, but what I'm probably going to do is get the, the stands from the car and have you, we're, we're gonna walk over to the ceremony because it's really close, but I'll probably have you walk over first. Why don't you come up to room 790, get the keys, and then that way you can do your thing momentarily. All right, so per usual, wedding's running a little behind schedule, but no wedding would be complete without running a little behind schedule, so. Thank you. Remember this, Trish? Yeah, I do. Probably should do establishers, I'll get the cameras. Yeah, I'll do some establishers. Um, 7200, I want a 7200 on a monopod for me. Mm -hmm. And then just do a um, 7200 and... Uh, the blue. All right, um, and... Leave that on, we'll see, it may, we may use that. Just put that on a tripod over in the right. Uh, do it, make that one the bride side. Make that one that side. Yeah, on a, on a tripod, left side. And frame it so that the person that's giving the speech right is like left frame, kind of in the shot at all times. 
I always have to quickly rebalance this each time I take it out of the case because because I uh, you have to like break down the actual thing when you plug it when you put it back in the case because they didn't design the case very smartly and it doesn't fit in there with the way that I actually have to set it up and balance it for the camera but luckily it doesn't take me long. That's it. I always shoot all the establishers for the most part in 60 frames because I like to slow these down. Get my white balance set here. Whenever I'm setting white balance, it's important that it just looks like the room. So, you know, I use my eyes more than anything to just really do the best I can of looking at the room. I really like this little color shift bracket thing. So I'll get my white balance set accordingly. My scale in this case, the Kelvin is about 4,300. But then I noticed that without that, there's obviously some green tint, yellowish tint, because this room is. So I'll just naturally pull some of that out and go more toward the blue. And then it will look pretty clean and looks like the room, like the room looks. In what's called F mode for the gimbal on the Crane 2. And F mode allows me to basically, as I tilt up, the camera tilts with me. And as I tilt down, the camera tilts with me down. That way I can get these nice moving shots that pan down naturally. I never use the joystick for that movement. I always use the actual um, gimbal to do that. How you doing? I'm Scott. What's your name? Alex. Alex, good to meet good you, man. To meet you. How you doing today? Good, dude. What was your good. name? Scott. Scott, awesome, yeah. man. Great good to meet, meet you. you. I was with your other crew earlier, the other yeah. guys. Good, good, good crew. I don't like when people are in the shot, so since she was walking, let's do that again. Nice pan down here. I like using stuff as reveals, as you saw earlier. earlier. I like to slide around things. It's nice to use some foreground as some movement. That camera's way, that, that lens is way too tight for a safe shot. A safe shot, obviously, like its name implies, is supposed to be safe. And safe to me is kind of having basically everything in the shot so that at any given point, this shot is usable. And because we shoot in 4K, we can always crop in even more, but the goal is to get this shot positioned good enough that it's capturing a little bit of everything. Now there's a Catholic ceremony so that I know, I know the bride and groom are gonna be way over there, way over there sitting. Um, I don't need that wide in the shot, but I wanna make sure that everything from this person, the priest that'll be there, to where they'll actually do their vows and all that, I want that to be a safe enough shot. So I'll kind of frame it up like that. Can you see that? So that's my thought. My thought is that that'll be kind of safe to basically there. And that is just really for the beginning. Once we get going in the ceremony, I'll come and I'll make this, I'll kind of reposition this as another safe if I choose to, but I want that to be safe enough. Then what I do is I turn on the Wi-Fi on whatever camera is being unmanned. So in this case, it's this one, no one will be behind this camera and I will connect it to my phone. And then that way I can hit record from wherever I'm at and I can also make sure that the shot still looks good and then people are in the frame. So like you see here. Oh, I opened up the Sony app. So I open up my little app here. I change this to remote operation. It will allow me to see the shots and more importantly, make sure that it remains running and I can check it at any given point. I can refocus, make sure things are focused correctly. And that's what I wanna do. But then I remembered that I actually need the GH5S on this one, not this, so uh, let's scratch that idea. 
I always put the GH5S on a tripod, and I use the GH5 because of the stabilization. So, same method now on the other camera. Ah, oh, perfect, you guys are right here. This is fantastic. So what's the word? TD the right man, yeah. That's how I am too. I have little Listerine strips with me all the time. It's the best way to do it. Well, one, anyone? Let's please. Take it. I always was told never to turn down mints, so I'll take one. Take it, exactly. Because if anyone gives it to you, Usually they're saying something. Um, how do you shoot your uh, ceremony? I'll be down here. Okay, as they come down? Alex, I don't know. I'm if trying to get up there. It's locked. I'm it's trying locked. to find somebody to ask. So just but. find some amazing angle. Just sure. You could do the back shot. You actually do the back shot because yeah. your dress is nice. Yep. And then just run up and try to help me with um, her kissing your dad. Yeah. Dad just went in so you're going to shoot up there, tracking them down? Okay, and I'll hang with you there. It cost you five dollars. All our other shots, our other shots don't move at all, and they're usually fairly tight. As long as you literally don't stand directly in front of them, which I don't expect you to do, they'll never move. So you can, you, no matter how much you're in the aisle, we never have a safe shot down the aisle, so you're good. You can hang as much as you want there, and you're great. I move everywhere. Yeah, it's perfect. We purposely don't put a camera in the aisle so that you, you can have freedom. Oh, cool. Yeah, up here on the spot where, they, where the mic is. Um, I think I need that. Where is it? Is that Best the thing smallest ever. they come in? This, well you can get them smaller, but they lose, like the smaller they are, the not so as strong the research, they are. Right? Yeah, I've done a lot of it. Right, what is it? These ones specifically are, and they actually make one, we're waiting for the newer model to come out. There's a five watt model coming out. This is the two watt. These are What's called, called? Midland X Talker. Midland? Midland X Talker. X. Midland's like Midland. Midland. I think it's pronounced Midland, that's why I don't know. Um, and it's called the X Talker. This model is called the X Talker that looks like this. And then they have, um, I mean, and then you can get it's these, smaller. it's so convenient. Yeah, 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 it's not bad. The amount of times that like we're communicating in a hotel, random floors and everything, things, and you're like hoping someone looks at the text or looks at, and you're like, why aren't they answering me? Like, yes, it's so, it's so convenient. Happens, exactly. Like, Dude. Yeah, because I'll be like, okay, do you have a safe shot? I need to move. And we, it's just yeah, 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 so yeah. much easier than doing the phone thing. Like, hey, look I've at your phone, look at your phone. <laughs> that one looks small enough. Yeah, this I is would... small. They make a, the one we're getting is bigger, but it's stronger. If you get in some like downtown areas, you can have some trouble going a longer so distance. You talk there. Yeah, you just press that and talk. It's really nice. I have this on Wi-Fi. I'll control this camera. You sure. Yeah, just at least start it. I'll track them coming down the aisle. You're gonna get um. I'll get a groom shot. Got Don't it. worry about the groom shot. You know, it could be kind of cool. We never actually do it, and I think it'd be a more useful shot. This is gonna be safe. I'm gonna be getting them coming down the aisle. What if you did like, you turned and looked sideways down the aisle like this on that side as people are just kind of coming through. With this or with the other? With that other one. Yeah. Like leave this safe, I'll be there tracking them coming down. Your shot would be a safe not following them but just like letting them walk through the aisle. And then once, the, once they stand you get blocked, then just get whatever shot you can until they get in position like normal. Okay, and then ceremony, what, what's my main? And then your main thing is going to be like you normally are, so, except on this side. So, bride. Um, reading, might as well. Yeah, get the reading. Talking. It's not going to be insanely tight, but it'll be, per it'll be fine, like whatever's happening at the reading. And then I'll be, oh, you know what, I'll also be tight on the officiant right at the beginning. Yeah, this shot is just going to stay like this. I have this wide enough that reading's always in it. Yeah. Couple's always in it. All right, I'm going to get audio on the uh, yep. officiant. So one thing you won't see, you won't see, because we're not with Pablo right now, but whenever we start an audio recording, he will hit record and he'll immediately say what it is. So he'll say, Ceremony Groom Lav, June 15th, 2018. He'll say that immediately because I want to make sure that as soon as I hit play in post, I know what that file is and then move on. Just good audio tip to do with any audio. All right, and I'm gonna hit record and let this thing go. Good thing about the GH5s is I can run this for an hour and a half. Never stops recording, all one file.
Megan, haven't you done this before? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. You made it. <laughs> to be my wife. I promise to be true to you. I promise to be true to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you. I love you and honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I'm Margaret T. At the end of the ceremony, I always just keep a 12 to 35 on a GH5 just uh, in case, in case like something suddenly happens and I'll just kind of keep that off to the side as I'm packing everything up just in case they suddenly have like some sort of special thing that no one told me about I don't think they do so I think we're okay but at this point we'll basically pack up most of the gear and then we have the photo shoot up next which is when we get time with the couple but there's not a lot of time for it so it's going to be probably pretty short over where we're going. So I'll have a gimbal. Pablo will have a 7200 normally, but we don't have a ton of time. So, so right now it's 4:35. Photo shoot was supposed to start at four. Hasn't started yet. We're scheduled to set up for the reception in an hour and 25 minutes and we haven't yet went to the actual location to shoot. So that's uh, welcome to wedding business. Because unfortunately we can't just go with them like in the limo because they're obviously going to get to the ceremony or they're actually going to get to the reception like when it starts basically, walk in and be introduced where we have to obviously set up lights and do establishers and do a lot of other stuff. So, so we'll probably, one of us will probably go with a couple get some shots while they're doing their photo shoot and it's really the only option we have. I'm just gonna make sure that they're not uh, doing any sort of like special thing here, so special walkout, which it looks like they may be doing. So I'm gonna get that. Okay, I'm gonna go set up for the reception. Thinking we might do that, and then I'll just follow them and get some gimbal stuff as much as I can. If I can get out early and come back, or if we get lucky enough that, I mean, the cocktail hour starts at six, so we have six to seven. 
at the venue. I'm just afraid that because they're running late, they're going to stay out in photos till like 6:45, and get there and be like, "Please help us introduce." Like, and that can't happen. It can only that can only happen if like, because if I because at least if one of us is with them, we can get shots as much as we want or as much as we can. Worst case scenario, they're running super last second. Someone's at least there getting getting the stuff. There you go. I'm a busy, busy man. Busy's better than bored. <laughs> busy's better than bored or oh, yeah. broke, right? That's it. Man. My boss kept me busy. Yep. That's right. I don't need a ton of time with them when we're running last second. I'll obviously respect that. But definitely got to get some. Uh, I should get my ND filter out, but. But, might as well knock out some quick establishers while they're doing this. I don't really like to get too much footage of them taking pictures because it's kind of pretty boring. The actual shots, so. Just knock out some establishers here. Ooh, a little sun peeking through the trees there. Very nice. Don't laugh. So if you are in an event like this where you're obviously running behind and you want to make sure you get shots, one thing you can do that will help the photographer and also just help move time along is when they are going from photo location to photo location, for example, if they go from here to the next place, I'll try to see if I can get just the bride and groom to walk, hold hands and enjoy them together and get shots of them walking and the stuff that I want while they're progressing to the next location. It kind of kills two birds with one stone and it's respectful to time and also you can still get the shots that you want. So I try to do that as a minimum and then I'll try to obviously get time with just them as well. But it's useful and I think people always appreciate it when you can kind of knock some things down, especially in an event like this where we only have like 45 minutes for all their shoot. It's just not a lot of time, so got to do what you got to do. Get some shots okay, of, you, of you guys together. You we'll kill right. two birds with one stone. First. Okay. Uh, <laughs> is it okay if we move my gal? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's, it's pretty common. Okay. We'll go off this one over here because I want to get a shot of you walking. It'll give it. It'll give it a, an extra walk, okay. and it's easier to it's, and it's easier to get off this wall too. And then we'll just walk over. I want you guys. Anytime that I'm shooting with you, I just want you guys to just like enjoy your moment together. Okay. Like, don't look at the camera. Don't think about it. Just literally, like you're out on a date okay. with a wedding dress and a. <laughs> Okay, and then oh, give me one second. Should we look at you? Or like no, okay. kind of just enjoy each other like you're just enjoying the day. Look at each other, a little smile. Nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Look at each other a little bit. Keep, keep coming. Nice. All right, head on up. So this is actually a recent change for me, but um, I use NDs more now than I used to simply because actually it's convenience. It's not actually, to be honest, that I care that much about boosting the shutter because I have done that forever and it works fine. It's actually more of the convenience that it's really easy to just twist it to get a little darker and a little brighter rather than having to bump the shutter. And what's nice is that you can kind of do it in real time for the shot, which is really convenient because instead of having to bump the shutter and see the change, if I just need a little bit of adjustment, it's really nice being able to just twist it and it naturally changes very, very smoothly that I could actually use it in a shot if I had to, worst case scenario, rather than seeing it go It's really, really nice. We have an ND filter for 24 to 70. Once again, speaking in equivalent terms, 24 to 70, 72 hundreds, and the 51.2. Um, and those are basically the only t lenses that we use that we use where we would need ND for outside. Are you get? Are you they staying up there? You said. Yeah, we stay up there for a second. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. 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 While you're there, real quick, look at each other. Lean in for a little kiss. One more, one more. I know it's weird, but you guys look amazing. Beautiful. Scout each other. Really connect with each other. Really connect. Yeah, exactly. Make your laugh, man.
Look down. And turn around for a kiss before you hit that light. Kiss? Yeah. Nice. Right there, yeah. Mm, this uh, is pretty. Remember, turn counterclockwise with your bodies a little bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now using some of this little, uh, lean down to her. using these poles here for some reveal. It's nice. Hold on, let's get my exposure right. I like one of the things that's important in her dress. I like that one. If you said that we're done, it would be good at it. Can I borrow him? Finger, hand under her uh, chin, and you're going to pour it to you. Nice, hold that. Hold her one second. Let me get her exposure. And look at each other now. Hold it, hold it. Do it again. Let's do all that again. Nice, hold that. Watch the head. So move. Checking focus. Nice and slow. All right, here we go. Yeah. There's my light. Keep looking at each other. That's beautiful. Stop right there. I'm going to spin around you. Lean in for a kiss. Bam. One more. Keep going. And stop right there and lean in for a kiss. Coming around. Nice, nice, nice. Keep it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Beautiful. You're happy to be married. You hold that, plus it's going through. We're trying to look at each other. You lean into each other. So wrapped up all those shots, everything worked really, really well. Fortunately, the photographer uh, was very good and he understands like and loves them interacting more than posing. So I was able to get lots of good stuff with them, which worked, worked out really well. Now we're headed into the Crystal Tea Room, which is on the ninth floor of the Wanamaker building. Really cool, really cool venue. Excited to be here. We've never filmed at this venue. Um, but we filmed at a lot of the venues that they kind of co-own and they're all very nice. So Pablo's already been here. It's just before six. So luckily we're actually decently on time right now. Pablo has set up all the lights. He got establishers and everything already. Um, I'll go in and get some more establishers with this, depending on what we're looking for and what we need. And then we will, uh, reception starts in 40 minutes. Pablo, we're here. Where are you at? How are you? They sure are. Yeah, somewhere in there. Pop Philly's in the house. I got some really good establishers of people like setting things up, the band getting ready, the room a little bit, but I need obviously stability. You're, you probably want okay. to get some like, stable stuff. You want to get a light and do some table stuff quick? Yep. How you doing? I'm Scott. I'm Miguel. Nice it's a to pleasure. meet you. It's beautiful, a beautiful place. Thank you. I like the chandelier in the back, so let's do this one. Okay. So we'll always light tables and light all the shots that we want to get. Um, because it really allows us to separate what we're looking for rather than just bumping up ISO to crazy numbers for no reason. Um, and the great thing about those torch lights is that they are temperature controlled so we can make the light match what we got going on in the room. A um, little less intensity on it. There we go. This is also OV shot in 60 frames. Mm -hmm. 
And as you'll always notice, like I said earlier, we never shoot. We never shoot from the same angle of the lights. Always a different angle. Never shoot from the same angle of lights. It looks terrible. And I will quickly show you a demo of what it looks like when you shoot with light. You can see right there how horrible that looks. That is the exact same lighting, shooting directly with lighting. And if I go over here and then shoot off the light, that's the difference. So if you have lights, definitely light things, but make sure you never shoot with it because it just don't look good. Go a little bit closer to, to Pop Philly. There we go. That's good right there. Pop Philly is the name of the band, in case you missed that part. I'm gonna compress in a little bit on the lens. Now there's obviously certain venues that are a lot easier to do this stuff at than others. This one's a nice venue, a very nice venue, so it's, it's the same thing like I said earlier, I'm gonna shoot it just a shot of like the glasses kind of in focus and pull into them. But don't waste time trying to nail the part coming back, just simply get it in focus there and pull out of focus if you're looking for that shot and just reverse the shot. Okay, so I'll, I'll focus right there, pull out. Oh, uh, you're, the, you're the best. You're the best. That's, <laughs> right when I saw you guys were, the, uh, were playing tonight, I was like, yes, these guys are the yeah, best. We were, we yeah, a before, bunch of times. Right? Yeah, like three or four different yeah. times before. Yeah, right when I saw it, I was like, oh, yes. Steven, Steven. Scott. 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 Yeah. Steven. Steve. Steve. Look at that. Yeah, a guy comes up and asks when we want the feet. They're, the, they're the best. You just, they're <laughs> awesome. It's all been fine. Yeah, board mix, speaker mix, anything. I mean, it's all, you've all given us great. It's been fine. Okay. Yep. Great. Awesome. But yeah, you just tell me quarter inch, XLR, RCA, what do you XLR, want? Wait, XLR, wait. perfect. Oh, yeah. look at that. And he's got a weight and <laughs> That's why they pay you the big bucks there, Steven. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> 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 Your medium bucks. All right, so I really like this shot here. Just kind of a walking pan up. Turn around there, just come around the bend there, just nice and Coming nice and the nice the and subtly. Dude, it was nice to the opposite way when it came down. Look at this, look ready, 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 wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. We can go full sound just to see what you Ah yeah. Just to get it on camera. Please don't stop the music. Okay, okay. Mama say, mama say, mama say. This calls for this calls for a faster rotation. Ah, gimbal did the gimbal didn't want to do that one. to have them center dance floor and we like them. Um, we like them to be looking at the couple, not all around. Um, so we never let them stand next to the couple, they always have to stand out here. And this is a little bit unique because this light is shining straight down and I don't necessarily want that on top because it's going to look wacky. Check, check. So I'm probably going to have to have them come out here more. Let me see if, uh, if, I, if my lights will be more powerful to to kind of eliminate that. It looks beautiful, but I don't want that to be a weird top light to what I'm doing. So I'd rather light it accordingly. So for those who are interested in the Sony a7 III, that's what this is being shot on, this BTS. This is a very, very, very dark corner. You probably can't tell on this, but super, super dark. So if you think that looks good, it's probably at like 30,000 or 40,000 ISO, I would think, because that's an F six lens or f5 what are you at right now 
Okay, you're at you're at it. It's 28 millimeters. Yeah. So, pretty good camera for the price. Hey, good to see you too. How are you? Good. Um, yeah, it would be great if we could have the speeches right here, just looking straight at them, and I'll tell them to find you, uh, find you for the mic, and so we'll, we'll yeah, light so you up we'll, nice and Yeah, Miguel nice and will get them already too. Yeah, be perfect. So like, I mean, usually I run around and get them. He's gonna just probably nail them, and they're all yeah, up fine. front. Yeah. So the only first thing, dance is right in the speeches. So first, no, first dance, short dance set. It'll be like two, three songs. Okay. And then actually, Miguel really wants the blessing first. Okay. So it's gonna be blessing. Okay. Then best men, best friends, father of the bride is last. Okay. Cool. And he gets to have the final word. That's where I'm at. Awesome. Um, so it should yeah, be boom, fine. boom. Um, doubles for those. So I'll probably bring down two mics just in case. Perfect. Um, but I'll set them literally right here. Yeah. And what I'll do is I'll tell the people giving this speech that you'll have the mic and go to go yep. where you are. I'll have you yeah. lit nicely and it'll and, yeah be perfect. We'll Look at that. You got an XLR and everything. I just gotta remember that that's yours because I'm so used to always giving it that I'll like be like, actually, well, you, here we go. Ooh, Perfect. What do you got here, bro? Little F8. F8. These things are sweet. This is my first time seeing one. Oh, really? These. these are really, really popular for actual like field recording. Okay. Um, so like, the stuff that we do outside of this that is not just you know board feeds. Um, a lot of like what they're designed like belt where boom a lot of shotgun mic type stuff that's mm -hmm. what these are really well and that's why they're facing up like that they're yeah. usually in like a pack eight channel um combo jacks and it has Fantastic. dual sd card like it's it's really really sweet device check one two check one two where's that at that's good where are you i don't even know where you're, oh you're up there <laughs> okay that's good because normally if I don't have someone that knows what they're doing, like Steven does here, um, I will like to go out of their actual speaker because what happens is a lot of times DJs will tell you that they'll give you a board feed, but they'll give you a feed that actually they're not sending any audio to. They'll think they are, and then suddenly they're not sending it. So coming out of the speaker gives me a guarantee that if people hear the sound, I get the sound as well. Now Steven obviously knows what he's doing, so I know and I can trust him that he's gonna actually give me a feed to that and I'm gonna be good, so it's no worries. But I would recommend more times than not that you try to go out of a powered speaker. If you see two cables going to the speaker, you usually have an IEC cable, which is a power cable, and then you have a, an actual XLR going in. That's a guarantee that it's a powered speaker, and if it's a powered speaker, it always has an XLR output. And if it has an XLR output, you can safely go out of that, make sure that you do not have phantom power on, your device if you go out of someone's speaker or it will turn their speaker off and they will really freak out and think that you just blew their speaker. So that's my recommendation. Speaker first is a good priority. If you know you can trust the sound person, the straight out is even better. And then worst case scenario, if I didn't trust that they had good mics, good equipment at all, I would just lab a person up and not worry about it at all. But Steven's got it covered, we're good there. So normally we have a remote control that controls these lights and turns them on and turns them off every time. That's the ideal situation, that's the way we like to do it. I forgot the remote at home. What I don't wanna do is have these lights on and be raising it and not raising it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tuck really close to this pole and turn them directly at the beams when we're pulling them up and down so that you don't see the light shining and moving as it's going up and down. And what we'll do is we'll turn them on, face them to the beam, turn them to the position when we want to use them and turn them away when we don't and pull them down and turn them on and off accordingly. Normally, I hit a button, really convenient, my favorite feature, the reason I own these, and of course, I've got their remote. Do the best we can of getting them not seen when we are moving them. A light stand tip for you, always raise your light stands or any tripods, anything top adjustment first and then go down with it because if you adjust here first and go all the way up then if you need little adjustments you don't have any available here to go up and down so go from the very bottom first and then that way you always have more lee room leeway here rather than having it stuck at the top somewhere do you want me to go stand in the middle yeah yeah up a little bit up 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 right there. For the speeches, for the speeches, I light like this. Is that gonna be okay for you? I mean, that's, that's perfect for me. Yeah, that's all right, right perfect, awesome. Yeah, so all, and that won't change at all. So I'll use that for the speeches, and then the first dance, and then nothing, and then I turn them off when I'm not when I'm not doing it. So it'll that's stay awesome. consistent. The only weird thing about me is um, 
all for all dances, like their first dance and parent dances, I put the, I put a light behind them, which means okay. I'm literally stuck. Is it warm? It's a flash. It's a strobe. Oh, oh, for you. Oh, that's so fine. So I'm literally stuck in this uh, line. So if no one just goes near my strobe. Oh, that's fine. No, no, um, that's fine. I I usually oh once or twice. Once or twice throughout the entire dance, I'll make a rotation with I my wish gimbal. Most videographers would do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so that'll be there. They're <laughs> lazy, right? <laughs> exactly. The last guy was They're like, oh, yeah. uh, the mud. I like the muddy light. Well, who the hell likes muddy light? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's so confident, and I'm like, is he right? <laughs> no, he's not right. No, he just <laughs> set these up. <laughs> <laughs> so you see how the contour of it that way? I can't. I don't know what your shot looks like, but obviously that's. And so we all end up shooting it like that, actually, just so that this is the background rather than the band. But that's essentially what we'll do, and we'll compress it all the way at 200, and it'll it'll uh, look nice. It'll look nice. And I'm just gonna keep that there. And we're gonna what we're gonna do is when people are walking in, just be there because I don't want people because people will knock that over because they won't realize. You're giving a speech, right? Yes. And she is too. Yes. Okay. Are you giving it simultaneously? Yes, back and forth, back and forth. Um, what's her name? Alex. Alex! <laughs> Do you know when we're doing this? Oh, they're that? both Alex's. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Do you know when we're doing this? I believe it's like after the first, like I think they come in, they do their first dance, yeah. there's a 10 minute dance set, break, yeah. and then speeches. Okay. But, Who um, goes first, guy first, the guys? Yeah, it doesn't matter, whatever, I don't know, whatever he does. Okay. But there's a DJ that's gonna bring you and have a mic at the center of the dance floor looking at the couple. So if the table's there, you're looking at them. So not standing next to them, okay? okay? And you're gonna look like a million bucks, we're gonna light you and you're gonna look like- They gave props. very specific- We have props. The, we the, the, I already talked to them, but they gave us very special instructions to not leave the center. Okay. Because of light, lighting. Exactly, yep, exactly. But we'll be facing the couple. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we just need to make sure- Yeah, so you, can do, so you can do whatever you want when you're there, just- if you leave the light, you're going to be in darkness, and, and every, we're not going to be able to use it. And I won't be and in the video. And you want to, you want to be in the video. I won't be in your video. So if you don't stand in the light, you don't make the video, and no one wants to miss the video. It's like spiritual to be in the light. <laughs> exactly. All right, Walk awesome. in the light. So the DJ will announce you from there, so where he is, go there, and it'll be fine. Okay. Thanks, guys. Philadelphia wedding. Yeah, switch arms. Uh, all right, well, that's a wrap on a Philadelphia wedding. Good overall day. Everything went pretty smoothly. Weather was beautiful. The couple was great. Photographers did a really good job. Great venue. Can't ask for much more. Just like any wedding, the thing I learn more and more every time I do them is that they're unpredictable. But part of what makes the wedding business fun to me is that you never really know what to expect. And it's all about trying to just work on the fly, um, build relationships with people and get a feel for what they're doing, how you can work with them better, how we can work with people. And I can't say enough relationships are everything. We got this wedding because of a referral from another wedding. And it's important to just be friendly to people. People like working with friendly people. And being a friendly person always gets you far in life. So. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys again very soon. Until next time.
uh, go create something.